The Pickleball Show is brought to you by PBX Club. PBX stands for Pickleball Excellence. Join today and get the latest pickleball tips and strategies, news, and opinion. Save money on paddles and other equipment with coupon codes to online pickleball retailers. Get travel discounts to tournaments and a whole lot more. How much does it cost to become a PBX Club member? Well, it's free. Just go to freepbxclub.com. That's freepbxclub.com. There's even a link in the show notes for this episode. Free PBX Club. Dot com. PBX Pickleball Excellence. Join the club. It's free. Hello, my name's Wayne Mugley, pickleball lover, and here's the host of the Pickleball Show, Chris Allen. Thank you, Wayne, and welcome to the show dedicated to helping you play better pickleball while having even more fun and meeting new friends who share your passion for this great sport. My name is Chris Allen. I'm your host, and I'm looking forward this week to continuing our conversation with Deb Harrison, legendary player and coach. Deb is joining us from the Villages, Florida, and you can find her at her website, picklepongdeb.com. We've also linked directly to her YouTube channel as well, so you can see a lot of the uh, great videos that Deb has prepared for us. I've learned a lot from them, and I know you will too. Now, Deb, I wanted to start this week with a question that seems to be on a lot of players' minds, and that is, how do you beat a banger? I'm asked that all the time. How do you beat a banger? You either be a better banger than the banger, Mm -hmm. or be a better dropper than the banger. It takes a lot of skill and practice to, to deflate a hard ball at you. Oh, yeah. And it also takes a lot of practice just to, to recognize an out ball because so many of those balls that the bangers are hitting, they're, they're going to go out if you let them go. That's right. And there are a couple of things that you really need if you're going to beat a banger. One is something called a freeze block, having your paddle square to the ball. The next thing is a punch volley where you're going forward to the ball. One other thing is a block or drop, which you're trying to deflate the ball by going forward with a little bit of underspin on the ball to get it down at the banger's feet, which will enable you to close in more. So you've got all those elements. The natural tendency is when people start banging at you, you want to bang bang at them. Yeah. And you're not going to win that game most of the time. The fault occurred when somebody put the ball up. Mm -hmm. Somebody put the ball up in order to have a banger being able to hit the ball, banging the ball. Now, sometimes I feel that way also about uh, getting into a dink contest because I I tend to feel like I'm usually, the people that I play with are, are so good, I'm usually the weakest link in the chain and I feel like, if I get into a dink contest with these people, you know, waiting for them to make a mistake, I'm actually really just waiting for me to make a mistake. And, and a lot of times it doesn't take too long before that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I always think of this uh, quote. I think it was uh, 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 John Wooden, the uh, legendary UCLA basketball coach. He said that great teams don't win close games. Great teams avoid close games. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think of that sometimes in terms of pickleball. I think great teams don't win win these you know two minute dink contests great teams avoid those kind of things Mm -hmm. um is there is there a way not to get into a protracted uh back and forth little you know dink fest all the the time that comes to my mind uh chris is fluidity 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 Mm -hmm. you don't once you get into a diagonal back and forth back and forth back and forth think somebody's going to make a mistake either putting the ball up, missing the court, putting in the net. What you need to do is be able to dink anywhere, not just diagonal, not just straight across, and vary it. Mm-hmm. So you want to vary the, 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 the direction, you want to vary the depth, you want to vary the pace, and always be looking for that ball that you can jump on. Mm-hmm. It's a little it's bit a high. Little a little bit high. That somebody mm-hmm. mistakes, that somebody's made. But I think fluidity is more important in a dink, being able to go all over the court, not just one angle, um, and just mixing it up. And if you feel like you've gotten been gotten beaten in a dink game, just try to get it back. Just try to get it over and low. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah, if, I do. If, if somebody's got you on a diagonal and they beat you on it, just go to the nearest point of relief. Don't try to go back cross court. 
So okay. go nearest point of relief and get the ball back in play. Now, what? Uh, let's say that um, I hit the dink back and I pop it up a little bit high, which I, I wish I hadn't have done. What is my best move at that point? I, you know, the point may be over, uh, but what is my best defensive move if I'm the one to blink first and I do deliver a ball that's a little bit high? Uh, a couple of things. Scream. <laughs> that's usually what I, oh no, here it comes. Say whoops. Yeah. <laughs> I've got that Turn one you down. back and run away. Yeah, that's number two. That's my plan B. Uh, get your paddle up, uh-huh. put your paddle up right in front of you and have, have it ready to be smacked back up maybe two or three feet. Just two or three feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can't go all the way back. You don't have time. No. Uh-uh. Go in the defensive stance, get compressed and just say, okay, it's coming back. It's coming back hard. Let me get my blade on it. You know what I mean? I do. But I think backing up will give you a little time to, to hopefully get it back. You know what I mean? But back it's up. amazing if you get if you practice being hit hard at and doing the freeze block, how many you can really get back and save the point. If you get it back two or three more times, they are going to eventually make this mistake because they're mad that they didn't get it then. Mm-hmm. They're going to overhit the next one or the next one or the next one because you got it back. Well, and I think the key in that is is just backing up, like you said, just a couple of feet. Because a lot of times, I just want to I want to keep going back, and then I just ex- give them plenty of room to hit the ball right at my feet. Uh, it's it's almost you're you're doing almost like a reverse split step. You're backing up, and then when they're right before they're about to make contact with the ball, that's when you stop. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You you want to back up a little, get your compressed position, get your blade out in front. And if you can freeze block or block drop from that position, you're good to go and you can earn the net again and start the series all over again. You drop, 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 drop. Okay, it's up. And now you're looking for them to put it up. And what you have to practice in order to be better at them is to recognize the elevated ball and be able to do something with it. You know what I mean? I do, yes. Recognize the elevated ball and be able to flip it, poke it, snap it, do something with it that's under control. We don't practice that enough. And it doesn't have to be that high. It's amazing how how much uh, it can just be just a couple of inches high. And there's so many options with it. Yeah. You can do a a poke. You can do a flip. You can do a brush. You can do a lot of things for a slightly high ball just to take your opponent unawares. But be careful. If you snap it and and blast it at them and they're a good volleyer, it's going to come back faster than you hit it unless you hit it really good. So you don't want to start a war if it's not really there yet against a good team. What do you see the big differences are between the men's game and the women's game? They're getting more similar all the time. I would say three years ago, uh, the best women teams, uh, I think Jennifer and Alex are a good example of that. Jennifer LaCour and Alex Hamner Mm -hmm. are a good example of that. Um, They're from a tennis background and they're very skillful at hitting a hard ball whether it be a hard volley, a hard ground stroke, a hard return, a hard serve. They're very, very good at doing split step stops and putting pace on the ball. If you don't have a good volley, uh, other women won't beat you because they're always hitting it hard at you. Are women reluctant to get into the soft game? uh, It's, as I said, it's hard to deflate a ball that's being hammered at you. Mm -hmm. And unless you have the skills to do that, they're going to beat you because you're going to pop it up and then they're going to come hard at you again. As women get better at volleying and being able to deflate the ball, they won't get away with it because the second or third blast is going to fly out or in the net. Okay, you know what I mean? I do. As women get better at volleying, it's going to take away the blasting game. So therefore, we're going to be more like the men's game and do a lot more soft stuff until we get an elevated ball and then all the fireworks start again. But right now, the best men teams have a good, solid, soft game. They recognize the high ball, and they recognize when to take advantage of it. And no point is over until it's over. So it might be a snap, and then they get it back, and then dink game game again, look for the elevated ball, another war, and you know it goes on and on and on until someone gets it past them. The women's game is getting more like the men's game all the time, and I'm proud of that. That is great. It's fun to watch, too. certainly is. You've given us so many things to think about and so many things to get on the court and try. I can't thank you enough for your time today. My pleasure, Chris. I've enjoyed doing it. 
Now, if people want to get in touch with you, they can go to your website, picklepongdeb.com, and uh, definitely sign up for the next intense pickleball camp. Will there be uh, dates and uh, times there on the website? Well, no, how I do that is people contact me directly and we work it out between ourselves. Oh, okay. So it's just yep. a, a custom a custom coaching session for you when uh, whenever you're available. Yeah, yeah. Well, boy, you can't ask for more than that. <laughs> Deb, you're, you're just a, a wonderful coach and uh, we just can't thank you enough for your time and all that you've given to the game and done for the game. And uh, I think that uh, anybody who listens to what you have to say today will be a better player as a result of it. I thank you very much, Chris, and thank you for having me on your show. Lots of great info from Deb Harrison. And again, you can contact her at picklepongdeb.com. Tournament update after this. The Pickleball Show is brought to you by PBX Club. PBX stands for Pickleball Excellence. Join today and get the latest pickleball tips and strategies, news, and opinion. Save money on paddles and other equipment with coupon codes to online pickleball retailers. Get travel discounts to tournaments and a whole lot more. How much does it cost to become a PBX Club member? Well, it's free. Just go to freepbxclub.com. That's freepbxclub.com. There's even a link in the show notes for this episode. FreePBXClub.com dot com PBX Pickleball Excellence. Join the club. It's free. You're back with the Pickleball Show and your host, Chris Allen, and joining me from Arizona now, a man who has more tournament listings than you could shake a pickleball paddle at from PickleballTournaments.com. It's Greg Thompson. Greg, how's it going today? Hey, Chris. Thanks for the intro. I like that more than you can shake a pickleball paddle at. <laughs> awesome. All what how's right, it looking so out there this this week? We are going to head up to the Pacific Northwest for the Crunchy Dill Pickleball Tournament. <laughs> just a fun name. <laughs> yeah, how can you not have fun at the Crunchy Dill? Thing. And this is going to be at the Eugene Family YMCA in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, the tournament dates are May 22nd through Monday, May 25th. The registration started in February on the 15th, but it goes all the way through May 11th. So let's make sure we get on that one, register for it. Beautiful part of the country. I've heard that that YMCA is an excellent facility. Um, Susan Niles is your tournament director. Next, we are going to head to the Southwest. Oh, I was waiting for it. Oh, I'm right on the swooshes today, man. I've got a hair trigger. I'm ready for it. I know. And we're getting right. We're simpatico now. See, I know the pause. Here it comes. There you go. Swooshes me right into the new part of the country, which is in Brigham City. Brigham City, Utah, with the Brigham City Memorial Pickleball Tournament being held at the Brigham City Pickleball Courts. And that is Saturday, May 23rd through Monday, May 25th. Uh, registration started back in September and is going all the way through May 9th. Um, Kyle Klein will be your tournament director for that. Uh, that should be an awesome, awesome tournament. Great players out there, Kyle being one of them. Um, a, lot of, a lot of good pickleball just in that part of the country, and it's just beautiful there. So if you can, make it out to that tournament because it should be uh, very well ran and great play. We're going we're gonna to stay in the Southwest, Chris, but feel free to swish me if you want. Uh, I'll give you half a swish since we just <laughs> stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did swish up to California, so yeah, half a swish is probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to the uh, California Senior Games. It is at the Arcadia Tennis Center in Arcadia, California. From what I've heard about this tournament in the past, it is such a great tournament. Everybody has such a great time there. And Michelle Logan is your tournament director and point of contact if you have any questions for that one. Again, it's California Senior Games, May 23rd through the 25th in Arcadia, California. Appreciate the update, Greg. Look forward to talking to you next week. All right. Talk to you soon, Chris. Hey, I wanted to send out some thank yous as well to people that have just been there week after week supporting the show on social media. When we tweet a new episode, they retweet it. When we post it on Facebook, they like it. And even more importantly, they share it which really gets the word out uh 
can't tell you how much that means to us. We really do appreciate that. Amy Potapoff, thank you very much. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, Amy, but we sure do appreciate the support. Also, Georgia Mountain Pickleball, thank you, and Virginia Pickleball as well. Lots of other people and organizations, too, and I'll try to get to you all in the weeks to come. Give us a call anytime, one 855 show or email us whenever you like, mail at pickleballshow.com. I'm Chris Allen. This is the Pickleball Show. And until next week, keep them low. The Pickleball Show is brought to you by PBX Club. PBX stands for Pickleball Excellence. Join today and get the latest pickleball tips and strategies, news and opinion. Save money on paddles and other equipment with coupon codes to online pickleball retailers. Get travel discounts to tournaments and a whole lot more. How much does it cost to become a PBX Club member? Well, it's free. Just go to freepbxclub.com. That's freepbxclub.com. There's even a link in the show notes for this episode. FreePBXClub.com. PBX Pickleball Excellence. Join the club. It's free.